What's up, y'all? This is Henny. And man, listen, today I want to talk specifically about my workflow, how I get from A to Z when it comes to working on this iPad with video editing. I've talked about it a few times over the last few years, but uh, there's a few things that have been adjusted and, uh, you know, there's been some exciting new updates to LumaFusion I want to talk about, as well as just how I'm getting my content delivered directly from my iPad to y'all. So, you know, a lot of people want to know about this, whether it's the lighting, whether it's the editing, let's try to make ourselves even better when it comes to getting our content to our consumers. Let's go. <laughs> So for those of you who want to try to figure out how to get a similar look, a similar quality, whether it's the lighting, whether it's the way I'm editing, using filters, using LUTs, as well as just my editing process, this is how we're getting it done today. First off, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I have definitely been trying to get my surroundings even better. I have changed my cameras. I'm now shooting on the Sony a7 III. And I have the Sony ZV-1 over here at the top. I also have the same lighting setups. I met, and my wife made this nice little H over there on the side. I got, you know, basically, you know, some uh, practicals behind me. I have a nice key light here. I have a ring light over there. And uh, this is my shot. And this is kind of how I have been getting ready to get back in the swing of things back here on this good old YouTube channel. For the last year or so, I've been using the Narbox, and it's been an incredible device as far as backing up and getting my files directly to my iPad Pro. But for those of y'all who, you know, this isn't, you know, worth the purchase, it might be too expensive, and uh, you want an easier solution, uh, it's very simple to use something like this USB hub by Pergo. I'll link it in the description. And, um, you know, just take your SD card and drop it in like normal. I got my SD card plugged into my USB-C hub and uh, going to files, look for entitled, private, since I'm Sony, and for a root clip. That's where I'm gonna find all my clips, right? And, um, you know, I'll select my clips, which I've already done here, and I will just hit move. I hit move, and what I do is I bring my clips into LumaFusion folder into user media and uh, I just hit copy. It does its thing and uh, it copies the files over just that simple. And you know, for when I wanna back up my files, I can use something like this Samsung T5 drive, plug this directly into my files app and copy all my backups from LumaFusion onto this drive. It's a very simple process using files and uh, using LumaFusion's backup technology. So yeah. Now, once I've got my files into LumaFusion, into the media folder, I can just hit the imported tab and come down and you'll, sometimes you have to um, bring it down and let the little pinwheel refresh if you already had LumaFusion open. Um, and you'll see, you know, you can easily select how you want to view and sort your files. Sometimes I sort it by title, sometimes I uh, sort it by uh, created date. So if I do it by created date, You'll see I have all these files of me testing cameras and testing different lenses um, for you know this new setup. I'm not sure if it's all the way set up perfectly 100% like I want it to, but for the time being, it looks pretty good. Let's take um, how I normally do a video. And if I was starting, I would find my clip. You know, a lot of times I work now with the Magic Keyboard but uh, for those of you who might not invested in my Magic Keyboard, might just have a pencil, might just be using it on your phone. I look at the waveforms a lot and I make sure I find where I start talking. Maybe back it up a little bit if it's the beginning of the video. And I'll just hit things with a cross dissolve transition. That just kind of gives me a clean start to be able to get working with my file, but with my sequence. All right, testing, testing, one, two, three. So, I'm done, I've done a ton of testing over the last couple of weeks. Uh, 
I hate being a perfectionist, but I love it at the same time. I hate it that it slows down my workflow, but at the same time, I love trying to perfect my setup, perfect the things that I'm doing, and hopefully that uh, it doesn't take me too long to get back to y'all. All right, when I get my video kind of ready to get started and going, uh, I usually have long clips that I like to really chop up pretty finely to make sure, because I do mess up a lot and I want to make sure that, you know, it's a pretty precise edit that uh, that works well. And so the, the very first thing I'm going to do is color correct the entire file. And so I will double tap, oops, I will double tap on the LumaFusion timeline and I will, you know, kind of look at what I have here. From the most part, I have presets set to the cameras and sometimes even the lenses that I'm using to make sure I can have the best, easiest, fastest workflow possible. So if I'm starting from scratch and I don't have a preset already set up, uh, I usually go and start with the LUT. And a LUT that I seemingly always choose is from my LUT pack. It's called Henny's Faded Grain. Um, and um, you can see it just kind of gives it a, a little bit of a faded look. And I usually only use it at about 85%. Not a whole lot, just a little touch of that. Um, and the next thing that I'll do is go into LumaFusion all the way at the top. And in their color presets, I'll choose original. And this kind of gives me all the levels, brightness, contrast, saturation, gamma, and the switch of the colors that I need to do. From there, I can easily start tweaking, maybe bring the contrast up. You know, if I feel like the colors are a little bit too on the red side, I'll bring it back to the blue side, things like that. Let me kind of show you. So this levels, I might take this middle uh, gray button and kind of play with that. I'm usually just doing it by eye. So for those of you who are, you know, looking at waveforms, looking at, you know, different uh, color meters to do all your color work, I'm usually doing it by eye and taste and see what looks good to me. So I'll start with this levels thing and kind of make sure that, you know, my level looks good. Maybe bring up the contrast a little bit here. And then I'll start playing with the colors. Maybe go a little bit more on the red here. A little bit on the purple there. Maybe bring the blues in. For the most part, I'm trying to find that color that looks the most natural to me. Um, I'll go and bring the gamma up just a little bit to give it a little bit of uh, that darker vibe. And um, sometimes I'll play with the shadow and the highlights, but for the most part, you know, I'll just kind of stick with that, you know, tweak it ever so and try to get the right look. And when I have it all the way set up like the way I want to, go to the next part and probably add a little vignette. I usually try vignette three, bump up off the intensity and the radius, just to give it a little bit of, since I'm usually centered like this, just kind of center me in and that's it. You know, some cameras I'll add some sharpening, but for Sony cameras, I don't feel like I need to add too much sharpening. And then I'll hit the star button and I might save that as a preset, right? And which is good, so if you already always have a setup the same, you can easily go to your preset. So once I figured out that preset that works well for me, then I can easily go save that and then just, just drop it in and it'll give me the colors and saturation and all of that that I need to, for me to be able to move through the sequence. And it makes it very, very simple. And to do things even faster, if you already have your presets set, you don't even have to go into the color and presets tab. You can easily just go here and tap this uh, star button and your presets are already right there. And I can select that and I'm good to go to move all the way through my timeline. So, you know, for the most part, I'll cut, set it up, you know, go through my edit, make sure that I'm not making too many ums, too many mistakes, and completely chop this video up. And when I'm done, I'll listen to it, make sure it's not too bad, and then I'll start adding effects, adding music, and things like that. Well, what's really cool now is that with this latest update from LumaFusion, say for instance, you have a piece of the video that you wanna put in last, or there's a piece of a video that you always do, maybe your intro, or maybe something like your outro, it makes it very easy for you to copy and paste, not only within a sequence, but also 
in and out of a different uh, sequence or a different timeline. Uh, so it makes it very easy. So let me go back to an older video. From this last video of mine, let me go ahead and copy the outro and paste it back into the new video. So the easiest way to do it that I found is to use the lasso tool. But the first thing you have to do is check this box. When you hit the check box, it lets LumaFusion know that you're ready to select some clips. Now I can go in here and select all of these pieces. I can come here to the clipboard, hit copy, and then I can go back into this video that we're working on now and go to the end of this clip and hit paste and my outro is there. So regardless if I do, you know, certain things like intros and outros the same all the time, I can easily select that piece of a timeline, hit copy and then bring it into this new timeline and paste, making it very, very easy to do copying and pasting. Or you can literally just take a piece of uh, a whole section of your sequence, take the lasso tool again, and you can just move them around. These little updates to LumaFusion are gonna make my workflow so much faster. Once I have my sequence, done my sound effects, done my music, titles, and all of that, let me show you exactly how I export this to make sure you're getting yours similarly the same. So once it's all done, I will hit this export button and I will hit movie and I'll go to YouTube. I do this the same way every time. I always upload to four. I'm always uploading in 4K, but if I'm uploading to something like uh, Instagram or Instagram stories, I'm going to make a resolution of uh, 1080. And so I'm recording in 24 frames, so I'm gonna use that. The video quality, I go all the way up to maybe quality, which is 75 megabytes per second. Um, sometimes I do extreme, but for the most part, I'm using quality, the audio quality, I'm at 48 kilohertz, the video codec, H.264, video and audio, yes, 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 boom, boom, boom. And that's basically how I have it set up. I hit that, you know, um, I use the category science and technology. I always upload in private first. And uh, I don't usually do too much of the description info and all of that before. I go before it gets to YouTube itself. And I hit the upload button and it starts writing the movie and then uploading the movie directly to YouTube. That's basically it. That's basically my whole workflow and how I do things. And yes, I know if you're new to LumaFusion, check out my video I did a while back talking about how to edit like a pro in LumaFusion. It'll basically give you the guidelines and how to get set up using a platform like this to be able to do very fast mobile editing on the go. And to be honest with you, I haven't looked back. I use this every day as my main computer to do all my video editing, all my music production and everything in between. So that's how I shoot, record, edit, and upload videos in 2020. Hopefully you got something out of that today. I just want to at least give you a little update to, uh, my workflow, how I get it done. And if you have any questions as far as how to do things even more specifically within LumaFusion, you can check out a couple of these other videos as well as hit me down below. So yeah, that's it. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Hopefully that helped. Head them out!